All right, so I got the uh, engine uh, bracket back in place, and uh, those holes that I drilled out were perfect. Uh, I got that bearing retainer uh, mounted in place. It's all secure, and I got the uh, engine bracket all tightened down. So now I'm gonna put the, uh, ch uh, the chain and sprockets back on there and just test everything. All right, I got the chain and uh, sprocket and clutch uh, put back on. As you can see here, just a slight amount of slack. That's almost perfect. So uh, I'm happy with that. There's really not much more I can do other than take the engine out and wallow out these holes like I said I was going to do. I didn't need to. I was able to get quite a bit of slack out of that. So I'm happy with this. Uh, I really doubt that this is going to, this little bit of slack is going to uh, jump the chain or anything like that. And uh, I'll probably have to make adjustments in the future like I mentioned in other videos. All roller chains stretch over time. Uh, you know, the longer they are, like the uh, the rear chain, the more they're going to stretch because you got more links, so more area, more parts to stretch. Shorter chains don't stretch as much, but they all stretch. So I'll have to uh, make adjustments in the future anyway. So the next thing I'm going to come in here and do is just like I did for the other sprocket, I'm going to come in in here and uh, drill a little landing area for the new sprocket because it doesn't uh, match up. Uh, with that old uh, 14 tooth sprocket so I'll get that marked and then uh, drill that out. I just wanted to show something here the actual little set screws themselves actually make marks for you you can see there's two here one there and one there the one that I need to drill out is actually this one that's a little bit uh, further back but uh, yeah what you do is you just kinda put your uh, set screws in and just kinda run them in, run them down to make a little mark and uh, then you know where to uh, come in here and uh, put your center punch and then drill your hole for your little landing area. So just wanted to make that point. Okay so I got my new little landing area uh, drilled there and then what you want to do is just come in here with your round file and just kind of file it off Just kind of make everything nice and smooth. Okay, and then we got all of this uh, shaving, uh, this uh, filing, and uh, drilling uh, shrapnel on here. So we need to come in here and uh, clean that off, and then we'll be ready to uh, put everything back together. I had another little tip that I wanted to uh, include in here before I forgot. Uh, just so we, just so we're up to date, I did get this cleaned off. I just used some. Uh, uh, carb cleaner and a little rag and uh, got all the shavings and crud off of there. I would recommend that you take your jack shaft out when you're drilling on it so that you don't get uh, shrapnel uh, and all kinds of crud inside your bearings. And that's where I wanted to come up with my uh, my little tip. Uh, I had these little hyperdermic needles. They're for insulin. I'm not diabetic. Uh, I used to have a dog who was diabetic. He uh, unfortunately died, but he lived a long life. He was, uh, I think, 14 years old when he died. And I use these. This is a, a real hypodermic needle. You can see the little needle on there. And I use these for coming in here and oiling up these little jack shaft bearings. What I do is I just take the lid, I got some, uh, some little oil stuff here, I take the cap off, and I stick the syringe down in there suck up a little bit of oil in the syringe and then just come in here and you can get in the, these real tight little bearings and just uh, push some oil in there and uh, it works really really good uh, if you live in a home with a uh, small children I don't recommend this I don't have any small children I just have the one dog because uh, these are 100 uh, percent hypodermic needles and uh, be very careful even though these you know, it's not like a drug dealer or drug addict or something like that who's been using these. These needles are still really, really dirty. Once you, once you take these little caps off, these are effectively uh, dirty. So be real careful. Don't poke yourself with the needle. I hope that goes without saying. So like I said, these are just regular old insulin needles. And you don't have to have a prescription or anything. You can just go to your pharmacy and pick these up. They're great for uh, 
getting oil into little bearings and stuff like that. So just a tip I had and I wanted to get it in the, at least into a video before I forgot. Okay, and like I said, I was gonna come in here with some sandpaper. What I got here is 80 grit and uh, clean out some of the gunk that was inside the uh, drum of the uh, centrifugal clutch. And you can see on the bottom there how much how much of that paint is in there. So I do recommend if you got a new clutch, uh, take some sandpaper to it, something real gritty like an 80 grit, and get in here and just sand the whole inside of it and get it as clean as you can. Probably get a much better uh, mating surface, much better action on your clutch. Uh, so yeah, so get in here with some sandpaper and uh, clean out the inside of this drum. And also, don't forget, uh, you could do some sanding on the uh, little uh, hammers. I call them hammers. They kind of look like little hammers, but the little um, the actual centrifugal clutch part. So uh, just a tip there, and we'll uh, see how it performs with all this gunk removed. All right, when you're done sanding all of this stuff. Uh, make sure you wipe it down, get some uh, carb cleaner, brake cleaner, acetone, anything. You just want to come in here and uh, get all the little crud out from inside the drum and uh, off of the edge of the little hammers. So get in there with some uh, carb cleaner, brake cleaner, acetone, anything like that. And just give a rub down just with a little rag. Okay, so we're all finished here. Uh, Got the new landing uh, drilled for the uh, set screw, which is 180 degrees opposite of where the uh, set screw was on that 14 tooth sprocket. And so anyway, we got just a little bit of slack in there. Not gonna worry about that. And uh, I'm too eager. I want to take it for a ride before I go in here and build the new chain shroud. So let me just show you what I'm gonna do here. Got my little garter belt on, my little masking tape uh, garter belt just to keep my pants uh, tight to my legs so they don't get all caught up in the chain and sprocket and uh, get all messed up. So we'll take it for a spin now. This thing is fast as shit now. It's unbelievable. Uh, it jerks a lot, but I think that's just from the clutch. Uh, maybe the clutch needs to break in some more or something like that. But when you're uh, starting off, it's like that. Uh, but from the mid RPM up to the high RPM, this thing just flies. Uh, I'm actually, I thought it was gonna be slower uh, than it was originally. Uh, because of the gear reduction, but in fact, it's the complete opposite and it's uh, considerably faster on the top end and uh, acceleration. So I'll set the camera up and maybe I can get a, uh, a shot of uh, the speed.